So moving away from ECOWAS to the West Africa Economic and Monetary Union, I mentioned earlier that usually is the um, those countries within the ECOWAS region with the safer currency, the francophones. So this is the map of the um, WEMU. And then under the WEMU, the WEMU has the common mining policy. And of course, the mining code I spoke earlier. Um, these are also, if you take your time to read these two policies, you realize that they are well aligned or they, they were inferred from the African Mining Vision, the ECOWAS Directive, the ECOWAS um, uh, Model uh, for Minerals and Mining um, Development Act. So if you look at some of the key objectives, realize the establishment of climate conducive to mining investments, diversification of mining production, local processing, that's um, beneficiation and value addition, coexistence of industrial mines and mining crop preservation of the environment. These are issues that we've already talked about in the previous um, um, governance framework. And these are some of the guiding principles that um, govern the common mining policy we just spoke of. So when you look at it, it's no different from the previous models, some of the principles that should inform the development of a good uh, mineral policy, that non-discrimination should be cl clarity, there should be clarity, simplicity and transparency, flexibility, competitiveness, sustainability. And we also have the mining code, which is also, like I mentioned, just like the, uh, the common policy, not so different, the principle primacy over domestic law, direct applicability without the need for transposition measures vertically and horizontally, general and binding in all its elements. So if you look at all these laws, you realize that Yes, they may not have been couched country mining vision. They may not have been couched with um, the direct uh, name of the international or broader regional governance framework. But when you look at their objectives and the key principles and elements containing them, you realize that these have been adopted from the mother um, governance framework in order for to, to, to simplify it for um, implementation by uh, member, the respective member states. So we move to the national level. We will not spend much time here at the national level because in model four, we spent a lot of time discussing um, the development of um, mineral policy at the national level. So at the national level, as I mentioned during Model 4, there's multiplicity of applicable rules. So many laws, because we mentioned that usually you do not find the mineral policy document as the only policy that um, governs the sector. You have other supplementary um, legislations and regulations that ensure the effective implementation of the mother law is also um, looking linked to other uh, national uh, contextual issues. We mentioned the national development plan, the institutional capacity and all that. So despite the AMV and all uh, and the um, sub-regional um, governance framework or legislation, there is also the need for these national policies, as I mentioned, because of the contextual differences pertaining in different, um, different um, countries within which mining operations um, take place. So some of the issues, just, uh, just, just like a rehash, uh, from uh, model four, some of the issues that will be containing the national law or some of the concerns that um, national, the, the national legislation will seek to address will be contract 
contracting or licensing, the fiscal regime, re revenue management, resource ownership. We mentioned that usually you will find that the ownership of the resource from the constitution is that it belongs to the people or is vested, um, it belongs to the state, but with uh, power vested in the government to manage it on behalf of the state. So that one is not under contention. We now have the environmental protection, upholding human rights and uh, local content among others. For the purpose of this discussion, we will focus on the licensing, uh, fiscal regime and revenue management. These are issues that have already been talked about, so we will not spend much time here. So um, in model one, and uh, I mentioned that the various, I mentioned that the various um, stages within the mind cycle requires various forms of licenses, legislations, and um, rights to be given to the investor before such um, activities can go on. This is to ensure that one, the investor has an exclusive right to operate within the area it has been um, that has been allotted to it, or to ensure also to ensure that the investor operates within um, some acceptable and safety um, limit. So we have um, contracts usually cover operational obligations, fiscal and economic development issues environmental and social issues, dispute resolution in the advent of um, conflict between the investor and government, between the investor and the local community. How do we settle uh, such issues without it affecting the mine operations? We don't have employment and local purchasing. There are legislations that cover uh, employment and local purchasing content policies, uh, change of ownership in case you want to change ownership, the company or the investor wants to move out. What are the processes to follow? Human rights and anti-corruption provision, local consultations that are having a more consultative um, frame, um, a more consultative process. So three types of licenses are usually granted. We have the exploration uh, license usually before this receiving the, the reconnaissance license, which does not um, involve any um, digging or mineral uh, or extraction activity. So from there, once um, the exploration provide, um, the exploration provides uh, a, an economical outcome that is, um, provides an economic viable outlook and the investor wishes to continue, then you get the mining permit. There are also other forms of um, licenses that you will need to secure the environment from the environment, from water resources, among others. We move on to the fiscal regime. Usually, um, Within our context, you find that the fiscal regime that is usually applied is the tax royalty um, regime, where you have um, a certain amount or a certain percentage termed royalty levied on the volume of production. And also, in addition to that, we have other taxes. Usually, the taxes themselves are embedded within the broader um, the broader uh, national tax system. So all companies, not it does not just apply to mineral uh, companies within the mining or extractive, but you have to say corporate income tax. It applies to all companies, regardless of the sector you are operating. We have, um, um, you will pay your, your, your employees, you pay taxes on your employee salary, which is the pay as you earn or income tax, as some may want to put it. That one too applies to all employees 
regardless of the sector that you're operating and other levies that um, you will have to pay. That one too is, is regardless of the sector. You're... So these all these taxes applies to, or fiscal regime applies to mining um, um, companies, not just them, but by virtue of their presence in the country, then they apply to them. Is the royalty that specific to the extractive sector and also other fees and charges such as the, the, the environment and other uh, transport fees that are paid. So these are some of the examples of uh, taxes that apply to companies in the extractive sector. As I mentioned early, earlier, the direct tax and the indirect tax, usually they are not specific to the extractive um, industry. It's the broader uh, tax system that pertains to the economy and applies to any company operating within the country. It's the other taxes that um, some of them are mining sector uh, specific. Back in school, we learned um, the principles of taxation and some of the characteristics of a good tax system. And we just try to summarize some of them here. We have neutrality, efficiency, fairness, clarity, and stability. So these are some of the, if you want to um, know how well or how good your country's tax system is. These are some of the um, elements you can look at to evaluate the tax system in your country. Then we come to revenue management. I have said again and again that revenues from natural resources are unsustainable. One, because mineral resources are depletable and two, because um, the sector is volatile, is prone to external shocks. Therefore, there is the need for prudent management of the revenues that accrue from the sector. One is to ensure that the revenues, one, there should be a governance framework that governs the overall collection and allocation and distribution in some cases, it would be good to, to ensure proper monitoring and involvement of the citizenry to see what, how equitable the revenues from the strategy that have been put to. It's also important that the revenue governance framework cover the utilization of, um, of, of the resource revenues. One good example is the Ghana's um, Petroleum Revenue Management Act. So in Ghana, although the petroleum industry is young, it's still young, it can be compared to that of Nigeria or Angola, but it's very easy to track the things that petroleum revenues have been used for. And because of that, petroleum revenues are usually um, 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 invested in um, fiscal infrastructure and other um, sustainable or productive um, investment because of the way the PRMA have been structured. Same cannot be said for the mineral sector, which is over a century old, because it is not until recently that um, the Mineral Development Fund was launched, uh, was passed that's in 2016, and even so, it covers just 20% of mineral royalties, only mineral royalties, all other taxes go to the central government. So it's difficult to even track what mineral revenues are invested in. It's difficult to know how equitable its use is. And um, in 2018, the Minerals Investment um, Income Investment Fund was launched, which also covers the remaining 80% of mineral royalties. Like I mentioned, so we now have a, a revenue uh, governance framework for mineral royalties, but the rest of the revenue from the mineral sector um, is not covered. Even so, under the mineral royalties, the law does not cover its utilization. It only covers the collection and allocation. 
And aside the governance framework, it is important that investments are done in such a way that it ensures equitable distribution of the revenues. Because if we are saying that the mineral resources belong to the state and everybody, everybody, man, woman, poor, rich, um, uh, should be able to benefit. It doesn't matter where you are because it belongs to the state. That's why it should be invested in pro poor sec uh, sectors, such as in education, health, and other social protection um, infrastructure. Other key issues that you may want to consider is the, like I mentioned earlier, ownership of resources, which is usually vested uh, owned by the people but vested in, in the states or in government on behalf of the people, the protection of the environment, upholding human rights. We, we've already talked about the UN print guiding principles of business and human rights. It's always important that human rights, business and human rights assessment are conducted at various stages of the mine operation to ensure that at each stage of the mine life cycle, the rights of the local communities and even the rights of staff, workers of the mines are not um, infringed upon. We also talked about the um, issue of local content. Now we come to the institutional framework at the national level. Usually we have the sector ministry, which is in charge of policy formulation and um, critical decision-making processes. But below the sector ministry, you have some regulatory um, institutions that oversee the, directly oversee the effective implementation of the various legislation governing the mineral sector. Um, normally you will find one lead sector agency, which is the sector regulator, and you find other um, supporting uh, sector agencies performing various functions that also um, support the activities of the sector regulator. One problem that we have with our institutional framework is that most of the time, sector agencies do not work together there is not a well-coordinated effort. Activities are done in silos. So you have replication of efforts. The limited resources that each of them have are used separately. You will find institutions doing almost the same thing. Data is not synchronized, which undermines effort to, to ensure um, effective compliance or effective implementation of the elements within the the, the, the laws or the policies. The need for a monitoring and tracking system. I spoke at length about how critical it is to monitor, to ensure that your governance and legislation framework uh, uh, are working as it should, because without proper implementation plan, it is difficult to know who is doing what or whether stakeholders are acting in accordance or within the remits of the law. So the implementation is as important as the law itself if you want to achieve the desired results. So some of the things that we want to consider, you would want to consider is that capacity there's always the need for government to assess the capacity of its regulatory agencies to be sure that they have the required skills to, um, they have the required skills to oversee the effective implementation of the policy um, document. Or do they even have the requisite human resource in terms of numbers who can, um, um, work or deliver on the obligation on, on, on their obligations and accountability. There should be systems in place to hold actors within the space accountable. That's why it is important to include 
or uh, stakeholders, including the public, the local communities, so that they will be involved even in the implementation process and where things are done contrary to the policy, they will be able to spot it and demand accountability or demand uh, responses to as to why things were done differently. So ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the things government needs to do to ensure an effective um, um, uh, national level legislation. At this point, I would want to bring the discussion uh, under model five to an end. As I always say, uh, do well to share your views. You can share your country experiences, ask questions, and we'll always be available to provide responses to your questions. You can send us some um, direct emails. If you are having challenges, please reach out um, to the email provided on the platform and you will be um, attended to. Thank you very much once again, and um, I wish you all the best.